been a lot of attention. Oops. Okay. Hi, hi. Welcome back to the last session here. And after that, after this last session, awesome session from Stephanie, we'll be having a short break and that'll be the last keynote. So I'm very excited, actually. We have Stephanie Gutnick with us today with the topic, Not Your Mother's Billboards, Adding Digital Out of Home to the Media Mix. So Stephanie is the Global Head of DOOH from Yahoo and DOOH stands for Digital Out of Home. So she is responsible for defining the overall strategy, product features and go-to market plans for all DOOH efforts. And Stephanie has previously held roles as Vice President, Digital Strategy and Programmatic Sales at Outfront Media and Vice President and also Business Development at Broadside. She also ran marketing for Broadside and worked in ad sales at News Corp. Stephanie is a frequent public speaker, speaking about DOOH, cross-media synergies, and business strategy at conferences from Taipei and Dubai to San Paulo. She sits on the board of directors of the Digital Signage Federation and Canadian Association of New York. And she's also the co-chair of the OAAA Innovations Committee, sits on the DSE Advisory Board and is involved with the DPAA, IAB and Ad Club of uh, New York. And she, Stephanie graduated uh, with a BA from McGill University an MBA from Edinburgh Business School and is currently pursuing a doctorate studying the advertising effects of CTV and DOOH. So we are very fortunate and lucky to have her with us today where she will share with us the academic findings of adding digital out of home to the media mix. So I'm really excited because I personally myself, I focus a lot on online marketing. So something offline is actually very exciting and especially with the world opening up right now. So getting kind of like getting ourselves more information about um, offline marketing in terms of this is going to be really beneficial for our marketing strategy. So without further ado, let's welcome Stephanie Gunnick. Stephanie? Hi, Clarice. Thank you so much for the intro and for your enthusiasm about the topic. I have worked in out of home for over a decade now. So uh, even before the pandemic, before it really became digital, I was really excited about billboards. And I'm happy that marketers are starting to lean into the industry as well. I'm going to go ahead and share some slides right now. And uh, the reason why I call this presentation, it's a fun one, not your mother's billboards. I uh, want to really make sure that people are repurposing how they think about the out of home medium, particularly when looking at it in a marketing mix. And I would say a good five odd years ago, I would be on the CES CAN circuit and I would sit at you know, a dinner party and look at the people next to me and exchange instructions. And um, I always remember the look in people's eyes when I would say that I work in programmatic digital out of home, and just them thinking like, how did I get stuck next to this person? These were the years of mobile when people wanted to be talking about retargeting and, and the use of cookies and, and out of home, there are no cookies. So watching people put together how programmatic and out of home could work uh, was a very interesting uh, position to be in. However, fast forward just a few years, and by 2019, and I remember this, at those same events when I would say, you know, I work in programmatic digital out of home, it was a totally different reception. People, you know, we've moved on from the year of mobile, uh, digital out of home is now riding CTV's coattails. It's all about emerging media and how they can be easily incorporated into the media mix. 
And that's really where um, the description of this conversation and this presentation today addresses the fact that, as we know, audiences are truly proliferating along with uh, the media that's available to them. But proliferation in this case to us as marketers means fragmentation. So we have to figure out, okay, with diminishing TV, linear TV audiences, where do we go find them? In particular, where do we find those cord cutters who have then moved to CTV in a subscription-based format? So we don't even get to advertise to them through that. And I really believe that the answer is out of home. So let's move right into this. This is a digital version of a billboard. And yes, it says Yahoo. I've been with Yahoo now for a year and um, having worked again in the out-of-home space for a while before that, I always thought to myself that when omni-channel tech platforms started to look at including out-of-home in their offering, that's when out-of-home would truly be able to scale and become a part of the marketing maneuvers that advertisers are using. And what's interesting about this picture, I wasn't able to use the exact image before, but years ago, Yahoo used to have a static or print billboard. It was styled in very retro fashion, and it was positioned in San Francisco as people were driving towards the Bay Bridge. And what I love about, you know, just not too many years later, we've gone from Yahoo making use of a traditional billboard to advertise their search and digital offerings to Yahoo actually including digital out of home within its platform and unified stack. So it really shows the progress that the industry has made, that the channel has made. And again, going back to the title of this presentation, these are no longer your mother's billboards. There's a a lot that has changed in a relatively small amount of time. And that's why I'm so happy that you're taking the time right now to understand what that is. Now, before, you know, there were some major elections that happened in North America over the past couple of years. And um, I was talking to a contact of mine in Ottawa, which is Canada's capital, before the Canadian election. And he was saying that there are three news stories that take place in an election cycle. One is that a politician is here. Two is that the politician is dead. Not actually, but just we're not talking about the politician anymore. And then three is politician is back. You know, exciting. Uh, here's what we have to say about their comeback. Everybody likes a comeback story. So on that note, I too like a comeback story. And I think Digital Out of Home fits really well into that political narrative, actually. I relate everything that I hear back to marketing. It's, um, I think I blame the academic studies, but it's really just my mind. Um, now, when it comes to the of home, as I mentioned, in 2019, we were really starting to see traction. Programmatic was starting to pick up and um, it was really this, you know, digital out of home is here type moment. Then COVID happened. Now, COVID's an interesting one because some people look at it as having a large effect on A, advertising, but B, particularly the digital out of home channel. And it did, but it mostly affected venues and verticals that were shut down due to the lockdown. So think um, office buildings where they have uh, digital out of home screens and elevators, think shopping malls where there are digital out of home screens, advertising retailers and movies and so on. So when these venues were closed, of course, advertising was not going to be running because there were not people present. However, the adoption of not only digital screens, but um, programmatic digital out of home meant that advertisers who were running at that time through programmatic means, they were actually able to say, okay, they were able to use some of the real time data that out of home has been adopting and just shuffle around where their advertisements were playing in order to hit their desired impression counts. So an example of this is that while urban digital billboards uh, were not generating as many viewers, the suburban ones, particularly those around essential retail, were thriving. They were over-indexing, so we were able to use that real-time information and reapply. 
And again, even if we didn't have that real-time information, we could just understand contextually where audiences would be. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but certainly within retail environments, grocery stores, charging stations for your vehicle outside of grocery stores, uh, there are certainly digital out-of-home opportunities for you to take advantage of. So COVID actually expedited programmatic digital out-of-home adoption. Now that those verticals previously, the airport shopping malls, have the viewership that they did beforehand, they're seeing a huge surge in activity um, and interest in their supply. And furthermore, we have other advertisers who are saying, okay, maybe I used to buy traditional out of home and it was a small part of my budget because it was a very difficult buy. Well, now I'm looking at digital out of home where I don't have to sign a contract. I can just turn it on and off as I desire and optimize throughout. And um, we'll get into the reasons as to why this is really making headway, but I'd love to move on to the next slide because it shows the difference in the formats that I'm talking about. And one quick point too, going back to, again, the premise of this conversation about where do we find our audiences? Certainly when it comes to mass reach, out of home truly delivers. So if somebody is not in their household, this is a way that you can access them. And again, whether it was COVID messaging saying, you know, please wear your mask six feet apart, or in a more exciting fashion, it's businesses saying, hey, we're back now that the lockdown has gone away and people um, don't have as much of a risk that uh, we saw, what, whether it was Broadway shows or, um, or businesses using out of home to reach as many people as possible in a cost effective way. So when we look at the landscape, um, I am, though I work in programmatic in a digital environment, I'm still a big believer in traditional, linear, static, out of home. These are those print billboards that you see uh, where the advertiser does get 24-7 share a voice. That is a great part of a marketing tactic um, and campaign. However, when it comes to flexibility and the different fun things that we can do with out of home, that's kind of where linear out of home starts and stops. Then we move on to digital out of home. This is the fun part. With digital out of home, we can do a lot that you might not have known. Again, these are not your mother's billboards. So when we, when we think about it from a basic standpoint, you can change your creative. So with linear out of home, you have to be very meticulous about, okay, this is what the creative is going to look like, either for the stretch of the campaign or for certain weeks of the flight. With digital out of home, we can not only swap out creative as the advertiser sees fit throughout the flight, but we can use different types of targeting, day parting, uh, to really make sure that we are using the right creative at the right time. So I've seen a lot of different examples of this. One, QSR companies notoriously love day parting and digital out of home because they can get viewers in the morning on their way to work with a breakfast ad. And then again, simultaneously at lunch or dinner on their way home, hey, pick up dinner, you don't, don't cook tonight type thing. So day parting is excellent for that. I've also seen day parting using real-time data along freeways to show how long the copy should be on advertisements in digital out of home. So an example of this is typically when you have a digital out of home billboard on a freeway, I suggest that you treat it like a social media ad. Drivers are heading by, whether it's the driver or passenger, if there's no traffic, you have just a matter of seconds to make an impression. So even though you have a huge canvas, you're going to want to use less content to make sure that the viewer is taking away only the essentials. So make sure that your branding is present along with a very clear call to action. Now, going back to data ingestion, sometimes we can get into traffic jam situations, and I've seen some clever advertisers acknowledge this by elongating their copy. They have more time to spend with this viewer, and so they're going to, um, to do that as a result. Now, what else can you do? I have seen pollen counts during advertising season um, being updated in real time. And again, we can target the exact screen's location 
with whether it's a weather feed or say a pollen count. Weather is another great one. Uh, if it's raining at one moment and then it's a sunny, beautiful day at another time, a retailer, for example, is going to have a great time being able to advertise that umbrella versus some sunglasses. So we can really get involved in real and I actually, I'm going to take a second. I was at a creative agency for a very big brand, one of the top spenders in the out of home channel and world and just across marketing landscape in general. And I remember uh, this was years ago, but to me, I just kind of knew that we would be able to change creative based on real time data as you would in a digital online environment. Um, but the creative agency didn't know. So again, it's really important that we talk about the options, even if to some of us, it seems very obvious. Um, if there is somebody in the campaign generation uh, team that isn't aware of the capabilities, it's gonna mean that uh, you know it might be an opportunity lost. Now, finally, when we go to programmatic digital out of home, uh, this really, we have tried to make as an industry, programmatic digital out of home emulate just any other channel that's available programmatically. There are point solutions available that just focus on automating the buying process of digital out of home. However, again, um, in my mind, uh, I really just objectively believe that it's this omni-channel adoption that makes the difference for marketers, particularly those who have never bought out of home assets before. But for even those who have, we know that traditionally, there are specialist out of home agencies and thank goodness for them because they have helped do so much heavy lifting over the years. They exist within holding companies to purely deal with publishers and try to streamline availabilities, different formats, because there are no IAB standards for our digital out of home. Screen sizes are different. Um, that's part of the attractiveness of out of home, but it's also part of more of the manual efforts that happen within a buying camp um, project here. And so what programmatic is able to do is just take that heavy lifting away from these specialist agencies and really liberate out of home to be purchased by whoever is interested in it. Again, those specialist agencies are critical. They have a strong understanding of what can be done with digital out of home and best practices. But some of these omnichannel companies are hiring specialists like myself and the team uh, that we have with out of home to really make sure that everybody can feel confident about how they approach this. And again, mimicking other channels, out of home can be purchased as a deal through private marketplace and through the open exchange, as well as through programmatic guarantee. That's something that's on its way in the up and up now that programmatic has been around for a few years in the channel. So any way you typically enjoy and uh, desire to buy uh, the rest of your media, you can do so in out of home as well. Okay, so just to sum this up, why is programmatic digital of home gaining the interest of advertisers? Well, as I've mentioned, we can make this quick and easy. It doesn't have to be a laborious process. One thing, well, actually there's two. Because out of home is often new to advertisers, there can be a hesitation because it involves a risk reallocating, as we know, media budget to channels that haven't been tried yet means that we're risking taking away money from channels that have proven themselves traditionally and putting them into a channel where we don't know what to expect. Um, this can be daunting. And so that takes me to the second point, which is out of home has developed this reputation as a last on first off tactic as a result of this mindset. Risk might not equal reward. Um, so because of that, you know, out of home might be an afterthought. Oh, we should add some out of home to this campaign. Um, but simultaneously, it means that if there is a budget cut while the campaign is being planned, out of home is typically the first off. Now, when we start to make it quick and easy to bring into the campaign, we're starting to see advertisers think about it more early on as a way to generate this cost-effective reach, point number two, across the campaign. CPMs and out of home tend to be lower than other channels if you compare it um, relatively speaking. And you do get that reach across people who are in an active mindset away from their household. And we can really track somebody's daily journey. 
um, all the way from, you know, commuting into the office because that's happening again to going to the gym, um, going to the grocery store on their way home, uh, whatever it might be, we can really reach that person with re-engagement efforts, um, which we can talk about when we speak about measurement. Now, I mentioned increased targeting precision. So yes, we are there. I like to think of out of home as contextually relevant um, because traditionally that's all the screens have is a lat long uh, to identify where they are and the types of audiences that might be looking at them. However, we are able to incorporate audience indexing data which screens index highest for a certain audience. So it's not that one-to-one -one target that you get in mobile, but you can certainly include mobile strategically in your out-of-home campaign to A, in, in, include re-engagement, um, but B, be able to take that one-to-many use case and bring it down to a one-to-one -one personalized case. So in out of home, it's kind of like this personalization at scale. And again, you can use um, your own client data or you can use data that's provided by third parties. Um, both are an option for programmatic digital out of home. We've spoken about real-time creative flexibility and again, optimizing performance as you would with other channels while you're learning from what's going on in these other channels. I really like this slide because it shows the promise uh, that out of home carries right now. And you'll see that digital out of home is spurring the growth for traditional out of home in general right now. Um, some of the publishers, as we call them in the out of home industry, media owners, network operators, they're converting annually a certain number of traditional boards uh, to digital screens. Um, moreover, there are a lot of place-based networks that are just digital screens. These are just digital out of home. And what's interesting, when we take this out to a survey, Yahoo did a survey, uh, it's a couple of years ago now, in 2020. And the use of programmatic for digital out of home is actually altering the way that marketers think about the medium. When it comes to, and Clarice mentioned in the beginning uh, when we were talking backstage, that she was excited about the psychological component. How do consumers react to boards? That's actually what I am studying uh, in my doctorate. And um, what I have found and what is in the literature is a fewfold. One, we can talk about digital out of home as a primer for other media. And this is from the consumer standpoint again. What that means is when we see an ad, um, we are going to encode the message and then decode it to understand how we feel about it. When we see an ad multiple times, the encoding decoding process is faster. When we see an ad across multiple media, it actually not only quickens this process, but it typically means that we're gonna have a more favorable attitude to the message or that it will have a higher impact on our understanding and awareness of the brand. And here's the most interesting point in my opinion is that actually consumers, and this is something that you know, we don't think about this, but we just make the assumption that when we see an ad play across multiple media, we are going to trust that ad more because we assume that the advertiser has enough money to be advertising across different types of media formats. And certainly that comes into play when we see ads on digital out of home and say TV, because we think that those placements are more expensive. Um, digital out of home, we think that because they're in a real environment, that they have that added meaning to them in the same way advertisers hope to get that kind of brand trust from, say, uh, what they would advertise in a newspaper alongside high quality content. So there's some fascinating judgments that we have about cross-channel campaigns, about out-of-homes placement within them that, again, we don't even realize we're doing, but they're there. We're kind of conditioned to think this way. Now, on the flip side, when we look at the actual measurement of an omnichannel campaign, we know from the stats that the more channels that you include, typically, the better the effectiveness or, of your KPIs will look like. And again, that can go part and part potentially with brand trust, but certainly brand awareness that comes in advertising across these different channels. Now, what does all of this mean on a marketing side and the marketer perspective? 
we found actually uh, any mass media, particularly out of home, is going to have, again, going back to the the title of the session, not your mother's digital uh, billboards, we're going to be thinking, okay, out of home is an awareness play. We are going to buy a lot of impressions and it's just going to generate reach and there we go. But with programmatic and different types of measurement opportunities, we are actually seeing that 91%, that's a really high number, of advertisers believe digital out of home can deliver both upper and lower funnel metrics. So that, again, is just really taking what we think about the out of home space and flipping it on its head. How do we know that lower funnel metrics are being delivered from out of home? And there's a few things to think about, um, but I always like using D to C, those direct to consumer brands, as an example of this. So D to C brands had done an amazing job in performance marketing based off of SEO and social media and, and digital plays. But they have started to realize over the past couple of years that this lower funnel activity only drives so many consumers and money has to be spent, maybe in a less precise way, but definitely in a way that uses mass media to generate upper funnel brand awareness. That's why it's called a funnel. And while it may not look like this anymore in a modern day consumer journey, brand awareness is still an essential play. So D2C brands have been using uh, digital out of home in particular as a way to move from this SEO digital heavy mindset towards more traditional mass media. And again, as performance marketers, they are going to be very calculated about this. I really like to reference Casper. Uh, Casper is one of those um, mattress companies that has revolutionized easy access to mattresses at a low cost. And they have become synonymous with the New York subway because they have these great advertisements in the subway that really cater to uh, what viewers want in that moment. They know that people are on some sort of commute, which means that they have some time to engage. So Casper started to put together um, puzzles in the subway for people to kind of solve while they're sitting down and, and want to just relax, but also engage with this media. And Casper is also very uh, thoughtful and tactful in making sure they have a clear CTA as they do as performance marketers with a discount, use this code, they can track that code back to the out of home advertisement and then gauge how effective it was in their overall marketing mix. So that is just one way of understanding why digital out of home works at the lower funnel, but also why it's essential in an upper funnel play. Other types of measurement um, we can address later on in terms of what we can do with out of home. But as you would expect from other media, re-engagement is presence, taking digital out of home exposed audiences and re-engaging with them across other channels in your campaign. We can also look at brand lift, we can look at footfall, and even um, how we can look at uh, return on investment when it comes to actual sales couple other insights here too. I, I often get asked by marketers for benchmarks in the out of home space. And we haven't typically had too many. However, a study by Nielsen went out um, rather recently as well. And we were starting to able to glean the actions that consumers take after they're exposed to a digital billboard or potentially a screen inside a venue that's called play space screens. And if you take a look here, 65% of viewers engage in actions after seeing a digital billboard ad. And what I really like is 57% immediately visit a business after exposure to a digital out of home ad. So what we're seeing when we have these studies and when we look at measurement is truly there's a reason why we see, again, quick service restaurant brands advertising themselves on freeways around exits. It's because they work, people turn off and they go and pick up some food. And we can look at that through a footfall study. Uh, but I feel like some of these inherent kind of understandings that brands have had about digital or about out of home very much apply to the use of digital out of home. So it works. Okay, what can we do with digital out of home with do? This is a really important conversation to have because I find that when marketers who are new to the out of home space start to contemplate the number of creative formats and publishers and venues available to them, 
they get a little scared uh, and can sometimes back away fully because they just don't know where to start. That's why it's really important to work with a specialist at your tech platform of choice um, or agency to understand and dwindle down your options. We have spectacular screens. These are all available programmatically, by the way. So think Times Square in New York, uh, Piccadilly Circus in London. Um, these spectacular screens can uh, very much be used I like them when you want to get some organic mobile engagement with your ad. So if you put really great creative up on a spectacular or a celebrity, the celebrity is always going to go take a photo and then spread it on their social media. But people will also engage with it too. If you add a hashtag, you're going to see an uptick again in organic social based on this digital of home usage. When we move on to digital billboards, that's where you get great scale as well as um, location-based targeting. So you can get these digital billboards in very urban parts of cities and you can get it in suburbia or even the country. So really take your pick as to where you want to reach viewers and digital billboards do a great job. They can only run static or display ads, so they don't run video in this case, but a great way to get the message out there. And if you want to run video in digital out of home, this is where we can move to what's called place-based. So place-based are in venues. Again, you see these totems. Um, there's also Link uh, UK or London um, over in uh in England, but there's the opposite link, New NYC in New York. These are actual place-based totems that are street side, roadside that can be engaged with in the same way that bus shelters can be engaged with as well in a digital out of home fashion. And then there are screens, again, in subway stations, in airports, shopping malls that can run video. And this becomes a very interesting play for if you do have that video content that you're using in social media, OTT, you can reapply it to digital out of home in a programmatic fashion. And um, whether the spot is 15 or 30 seconds, it can be accommodated. And again, don't let any of these formats scare you, even though there is no IAB standard for digital out of home. Uh, everybody has been really good at being able to take the budget that you have and understand the screen aspect ratios to make sure that it's going to be working the hardest for you. And I know at Yahoo, for example, we do have a creative services team that's very happy to either build out out of home creative or take assets that you have, resize them, repurpose them to fit the needs here. So this should never be the reason why you are not adopting digital out of home. Now, retail media, big topic these days. All the retailers are getting involved and out of homes an essential component. It's that bridge between the e-commerce world where people can order something off of their couch if they see a CTV ad they really like or if they're on their mobile, wherever they might be. But when we have consumers in the store, this is really a last minute decision maker where we can spur those unanticipated buys, but also provide information to consumers um, when they're in that moment of decision making. So wanted to point this out because we actually ran a campaign um, for Anheuser-Busch. And this was across multiple different types of media, but it was very important to the advertiser that digital of home be included at gas stations, for example, so that again, in this point of interest where people are filling up, hey, maybe I'm gonna go buy a case of beer. Um, and what we found was that even though, again, I'm gonna call this out, there were merging channel formats like connected TV and audio. And there were also traditional, well, traditional these days, native display, high impact. We added digital out of home and we saw a 2.4 times lift in offline sales ROI versus our benchmarks. So it really goes to show that this works. And we're also able to use in-flight sales analysis. I mentioned measurement. In-flight sales analysis is something that we can offer on our end. It's not causal, um, but certainly when it comes to understanding the sales generated per channel, we can take a look with certain um, verticals, certain types of advertisers and apply it. I have to mention the QR code 
what a comeback it's made. I know over in Asia, I was in China opening an office a good five years ago. QR codes were everywhere and certainly they were on digital out of home screens. They were on screens in office buildings, in the back of taxi cabs, and I loved them for that. Now, after the pandemic, consumers across the rest of the world have become much more, um, I guess, engaged with using QR. They're familiar with the way that you do it. Now with technology, we don't need a special app. We can just use our camera. QR codes have really made their way into digital out of home. And I mentioned in the creative Putting a specific call to action is a great way of getting measurement insight just by doing that alone. So whether that is a URL to your website, a hashtag, an SMS code, or a QR code, the QR code in particular has been making uh, waves. And here's an example too, we had a Discovery Plus campaign that ran across CTV, other formats, it had a link to an augmented reality experience, and we included it in Digital Out of Home as well. Um, again, going back to the context, I'm going to just pass over this slide very quickly, keeping in mind our time left together. But when we think about who we want to reach, yes, we can do audience targeting and programmatic digital out of home. But if we think contextually, we can reach business audiences very well without applying any type of audience because we can think about reaching them in their offices, potentially at the gym, at airports and executive lounges. So this is one way that we can use digital out of home targeting without applying any data related targeting at all. And let me just pass over this. I've mentioned some of the benchmarks. I'm just gonna let you take a quick look at this slide to get an understanding for exactly the breakdown and what people are doing when they see an ad, because this applies to particular um, brands. And also when I look at the stat here, 25% saw an advertised movie or TV show. Uh, CTV buyers um, and platforms have really been getting into digital out of home because they can't quite advertise their services on competitive OTT platforms. So how else do they get that mass awareness? Well, they go to out of home. And furthermore, Netflix believes so much in the medium that it actually acquired its own billboards along the Sunset Strip. So that just goes to show Netflix is also an out of home publisher. These are more benchmarks that we see what people engage in action based on their mobile phone. And um, if you look, you know, a search, when we look at measurement, uptick or search lift is actually going to be, I would say, even better than going directly to the website that's advertised because people are just going to think about your brand and then go search for it later. They might not go to the exact website unless, of course, there's that QR code or you're, they're using a specific redemption code. I've been talking a lot about creative. Um, this is a really important stat. Up to 75% of advertising ROI comes from the creative. That's out of home, that's other channels, but out of home in particular is so important um, because of the fact that the creative just has such a large canvas. So I've mentioned all of these best practices, keep it clear and crisp. I wanted to go through a few examples before we open it to questions. This is an ad that we made up. The gist of this is that we don't want people thinking that they have this big screen, so they have to make the most use of it with a bunch of content and text. That's actually the worst thing that we can do. We have to keep the message very clear to discern from viewers. Apple does a great job with this. They have fantastic brand recognition, so they can certainly get away with it, but it's also how they help build up their brand from a marketing perspective. So when we think about what Apple does and even including you know, the shot on an iPhone 8 or whatever the latest model is, in their out of home campaigns, it's using consumer generated content in out of home format that's very strong and powerful. Apple really understands what out of home can do well. Delivery services, um, I've been seeing them advertise across, again, going into office elevators for very busy business people, reminding them that they can use it to have their lunch delivered or go pick it up on their way home. I love this campaign. I mentioned movies. The Grinch used contextual creative to tailor their ads to different markets. 
New Yorkers totally get me? Is it because, you know, I've spent enough time living in New York that we're a little rushed and maybe have a, a kind of unfriendly reputation, even though I think New Yorkers are very nice. Um, this was great. In LA, he was joking about adding gluten to their smoothie. And um, it was just a very cute, appropriate campaign, as you can see, very clean with just um, important information about when the movie comes out. Spotify has some iconic campaigns as well. At the end of every year, they do a wrap up using data from consumers to put right into their out of home ads. So there was one about how somebody listened to Justin Bieber's Sorry dozens, hundreds of times on Valentine's Day, and they were saying, what did you do? And so again, it's using consumer data in a very friendly GDPR positive way uh, that makes the out-of-home ads personal. And finally, McDonald's, what a win. This is just exactly what I've been saying the whole time about best practices, um, using less is more mindset really putting in important details. Maybe it's the price, maybe it's a delicious looking shot of whatever you're selling if it's food um, and they really hit the nail on the head. So with that being said, we only have five minutes left. I'd love to open this up to questions. All right. Oops, right. Thank you, Stephanie. I think we have uh, one question here by Kate Smith. Um, do you think that DOOH can be equally effective for B2B marketing or are there any special things to consider? I love this question. And one of my favorite responses to it is that B2B, you know, the decision makers at businesses are consumers too, right? So when we think about B2B, um, yes, absolutely. And I'm not just saying that because I work in the medium, but very much because going back to where do we target these decision makers who work at the businesses that are our clients? Well, we can use roadside digital billboards or screens within the vicinity of specific office buildings or offices or companies to really make sure that we are engaging with those decision makers who are on their way to and from work. That's a great way to get in touch with them. And another one going back to, again, like those office building elevators, you have the decision makers who are spending time on their way up and down and um, what better way to have an omni-channel campaign than including your ad in that vicinity and then extending it to mobile or desktop ads. Cool. I think there's no there are no more questions from the audience, but I have actually a couple of questions. Of course. <laughs> Nobody has any questions. So you mentioned actually I was quite interested in this part where you mentioned about how in the digital billboard people can actually sh um, show those ads based on the weather. So does it mean that businesses can actually choose like, okay, if it's today's a sunny day or if the temperature is between certain temperature, you can bid for those ad space or how does that work? That's exactly how it works. So I've seen ice cream brands, for example, only advertise if the temperature is above a certain amount in that specific location. So it's a great way to also be very efficient with your media spend. If you don't think people are going to be interested in buying ice cream under certain weather conditions, then you're not going to pay for that media space. Um, I am happy to buy ice cream all the time living in Canada, <laughs> but uh, way to be conservative with your marketing dollars. All right. I wasn't aware of that, but uh, but this is very interesting. I'm going to take a closer look at those billboards in the future, I think. Yeah, because like um, in London itself, there are like the big billboards, as you mentioned, in Piccadilly circles, but there are yes. also a lot of um, digital space, like in the tube as well. And one thing, like I saw one of these ads, I was quite surprised was that, you know, Canva, one of the, yeah, yeah creating um, your media and things like that was advertised on, on the tube. And I was like, uh, really? Like, I thought it was more for office people. But I think it makes sense because those people who work in those uh, companies, they could be taking the tube. So I guess it makes sense to have it there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's 
kind of like I'm just kind of looking at the time. We have about a minute. So that means I could have a, a, another question maybe. <laughs> so it's like for someone like for a company that's new to, you know, digital out of home media, do you think there's any recommendation for them? Like how much should they spend the budget on to see if it's effective, if they're trying out for the first time? Or how, or how long should they invest this time in as well? Um, That's such an important question. One that in, you know, these 40 seconds, um, I, I can't quite answer, but I would say a few things. One is depending on the overall size of the campaign, that's where advertisers can get an understanding of how much they should allocate to digital out of home. If they're just doing a test to see if the pipes work, that's one thing. But if you have actual KPIs, lean on, again, the account manager at your DSP or whoever your agency is to say how much media budget should I allocate to have a good chance of gaining these results. Mm. Okay, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think I guess it's looking for the right partnership to get those kind of to get the right creatives up and then to test on the different locations available for them. Yeah, that's exactly it. Cool. I think that's kind of like rounds up the end of our session. Do you have anything else to add, Stephanie? Thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'd be very happy to answer. Okay, awesome. So thank you very much for joining us today from Toronto. You're early, taking time out from your early busy morning and joining us and sharing with us this wonderful knowledge. Digital out of media is a Kind of, it's a topic that not many people talk about. So it's definitely opened my eyes up to new things. I'm going to keep my eyes open when I go out the next time. So thank you very much. And um, thank you very much to our audience as well for joining us for this session today. And this is the last session in this track. There will be like a 15 minute break and then everyone can head on to the main stage in a track one for the closing keynote and yeah if you have any questions uh, you want you can connect with uh, stephanie on linkedin and i think that's the end of today thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you again next year take care bye bye thank you